Hi, I'm Janelle Pizarro. And I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss. And thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do. And do tech good. Ah, <laughs> we are here in Orlando at Anaventa Parks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so great to be here, everybody. And we are joined by the amazing Rachel Andrew. Rachel, you are the co-founder of Perch, a web developer, speaker, author, uh, yeah, so amazing to have you here. You have uh, quite a quite a lot of accomplishments in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this for quite a long time, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, what, what did uh, Chris Corey say, um, how he got a such a popular blog, he just did it for eight years. So yeah, if, if you if you keep doing it, you'll you'll eventually get there. Yeah, you should have amassed a bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind uh, providing our audience a little bit of context about you and who you are, mm -hmm. if, if you don't mind? Yeah, so I am a British web developer. Um, I live in Bristol in the UK, although I'm actually from the northeast of England originally. Um, and yeah, I've been working on the web for yeah about 20 years. So I kind of predate CSS. These days, I am an invited expert to CSS Working Group, so I actually work on CSS, uh, as well as doing a whole bunch of other things, Perch, and our product noticed, and wondering where I'm speaking. And I've written 23 books at this point um, wow. as an author or co-author. So yeah, kind of a lot of stuff over many years. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. So so what's your talk going to be about today? Is it today? or Yes, today or today. this afternoon. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm talking about well, CSS grid layout and layout in general. Um, mm. So I think one of the things I'm trying to kind of get across is the fact that it's not just one technology, it's not a CSS grid or Flexbox, or it's actually there's a whole bunch of stuff underlying these things. Mm -hmm. um, and it's those things, things like sizing and alignment and so on that really pull everything together. And so, yeah, I'm talking a bit about that and just kind of how this stuff all, all really works. Um, That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, it really is a... A new technology, if you will. I think that's fair to say, mm -hmm. especially with certain support uh, with Edge and Chrome, and uh, and I, th I think Edge has come a long way, but they still have a little bit of um, funny, funny thises and thats uh, within there. Uh, well, I mean, the layout stuff works. I mean, because the the spec, I mean, CSS Grid actually came from Microsoft in the first place, um, yeah. so that was it was their spec, and they they had an implementation in in I ten and eleven. Um, and they've updated their edge implementation now to match everybody else's. So, I mean, grid layout itself is is very interoperable. Um, so really it's just sort of how many people are on older browsers and things. Um, it is the issue. How do you I'm going to talk a bit about that. So. Oh, cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. How do you get to like, um, you know, talk, tell people all about like CSS grid and, and layout in general, um, you know, especially as a pioneer of, of uh, CSS grid and, and, and CSS really as a whole, um, how do you think like your message comes across and how do you get like, you know, people not like glassy eyed, like just, oh my gosh, it's Rachel Ann. <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, I'm just someone who used this stuff, you know, I am just a web developer. And I think, you know, a lot of the people on the CSS working group are actually browser engineers. They work, you know, they write browser code, they work for web browsers. They're not actually using CSS as a developer, which is what I do. And so the stuff I talk about is really just what I've figured out. You know, and that's always what it's been. It's what I've done for 20 years. You know, I figure things out, I write it down, and, and more recently I've been speaking about it. Um, so I try and speak about this stuff at, at the same, in the same place that the attendees are at. Um, you know, yes, I'm involved, you know, I'm a spec editor now on the CSS Working Group, but I try and talk about this stuff just as a web developer. You know, like, mm. oh, these are interesting things. This is useful. This will make your life easier. This will make your job easier because it's making my job easier. <laughs> and, you know, and it's that, it's sharing that stuff rather than, you know, getting into really into detail in terms of the specifications or whatever. Is it difficult to break people out of the mindset of the old uh, float idea? Like people that will hold on to that mm. really, really dearly and go, oh, no, I'm, I'm good with this. I could do this for another five or six years. Yeah, I think it is a different way of thinking about this stuff. And what I've found, because I, I do sort of full-day workshops teaching this, and I find that the beginners, the people who are completely coming to this new, they're absolutely new to CSS, they pick up all the new stuff so quickly. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, they're just building websites. They're like, this is great, you know, we've got a layout system, this is how this all works. <laughs> all of the people who've been doing this for years are like, hmm. Well, can we sort of make this behave a bit like floats, <laughs> you know? And they're trying to kind of take it back into a different, an old way of thinking because that's how we're used to doing things. Yeah. And we're so used to hacking around with, you know, to fake a grid system essentially with floats 
you know, we're basically giving things a size and pushing them around to make to make so that it looks like a grid. Um, but we're so used to doing that that I think it's difficult to get out of that. Um, and I think all of us who've been doing this a long time have stuff in our code that is there, like to support IE6. You know, <laughs> which yeah. is, IE6 is not coming. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, <laughs> but it's, it's like, you know, we're sort of layering this stuff on, like, oh yeah, you can, you have to do this thing, and I don't really know why, but but I'll keep doing it just in case. <laughs> so you think that there's a lot of trepidation from people that are trying to support these old technologies, like an, you know, to be fair, you mentioned IE6 rather than going going future and then providing some kind of a layer behind that of, you know, if if you are using yeah. that, here's a little extra CSS that, you, you know, you can use. Yeah, I think, and I think it's not even just that. It's just that we get so used to working in a certain way. You know, oh, if I if I do, yeah. you know, there's just all this stuff that's inbuilt that we know, oh, you know, we shouldn't do this or we should do that. And a lot of it is referring back to a browser that we don't even need to support anymore. You know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's just that we've just been built. We've, that's how we build websites, you know. And so relearning that stuff is really hard because we've got all this inbuilt knowledge. What about in the corporate environment? Do you, you feel a need that we have to, um, I don't know, kind of take a step back from grid or we need to stay within um, the floats or flex box within that kind of um, like a website, like, like an audience for maybe a, a small to medium sized business or enterprise? Right. I, I, I think obsessing over particular technologies is the wrong thing to be doing. Excellent. I think that it's more a case of, well, what solves the problem I've got in front of me? Now, if you can solve that in the simplest possible way that is supported by, you know, browsers right back, then do that. You know, you don't need to use CSS Grid because it exists. But if you've got a pattern that can only be built using CSS Grid, you know, if, if your choice is using CSS Grid or using like a ton of JavaScript to kind of get everything into, into place, then use the performance technology and provide a, a nice fallback. You know, it's like you don't have to use this stuff. You know, it's sort of like I keep saying you know, the CSS working group, we don't go and round people up and uh, yell at them if they aren't, aren't using this. <laughs> you, know, you don't do that? Yeah, you know, it's like. I would love a list of names. <laughs> yeah, list of names. We'll we're, take it. We're, taking we're watching pictures. you. Yeah. It's like Santa Claus. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, you don't have to use this stuff. Um, I hope people are playing with it and are getting their head around it for the time when, you know, for example, the big problem at the moment is people stuck on I-10-11. Um, yeah. And you get that a lot, in, in particularly in, in the UK, a lot of the sort of bigger businesses, they've not moved people over to Edge yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you don't have to use this stuff. You want to start learning it. Um, you want to know it's there because you're going to come across patterns that you can only solve with it. True. Um, and, 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 and you can create decent fallbacks for this stuff. And that's going to be better than a horrible, janky mess of JavaScript. Yeah. You know, that's... If that, because that's the problem, is that people are saying, "Oh well, I want to do this fancy layout. Um, mm, I'm not sure if there's enough support for Grid. Oh, I'll just do it with JavaScript. That's the worst thing to do. Then, you, <laughs> then, then, you're giving, then you're giving all the people on terrible browsers a whole load of JavaScript. Oh, like, yes. like everything's jiggling around, it's loading, and it's yeah. You know, don't do that. <laughs> We've got really good CSS. Um, yeah, so that, that I think that's the thing is, you know, you don't need to use this stuff if you can solve your problems without it. Yeah. You know, and if 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 uh, you can do something simpler that means you have better browser support with what you're doing, well, that's fine. You know, it, 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 people obsess about, you know, oh, we can't use any of this at all. You know, you might be able to use it in a small way. You might be able to use Grid to enhance something and make it much nicer. A lot of people who do have the technology, but it's still fine for everybody else. I, I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Um, what are your favorite resources to kind of give uh, people to learn more about just layout in general? Um, especially like there's, you know, back end engineers that sometimes have to like jump into the front end uh, yeah. because, you know, everything's on fire. Um, and so um, <laughs> how would you kind of go about saying, OK, well, this is the fastest way that you can learn, you know, the concept of layout and then maybe um, move on into to making this grid layout work mm -hmm. for you? Yeah, I, I would say actually for anyone, um, MDN and um, the Mozilla Web Docs project is probably the best place to start. Um, there's, I mean, I've actually written an awful lot of the layout docs for, for Mozilla, uh -huh. um, but there's a huge amount of stuff there and it is always being updated because the thing's essentially a wiki. So if people spot problems, they go and fix it. Um, and so there's a big learn layout section there anyway, which is designed for complete beginners to lay out to learning that stuff. I'm building a CSS cookbooks or layout cookbook section, which is lots of little design patterns, just, you know, here's how you do this kind of navigation or bits and pieces like that. Um, so, yeah, MDN is definitely the place really for anyone to go for this stuff. Um, 
because it's it's just such a wonderful resource. Cool. I love that. So what would be, um, and for, for some of the people that can't make it today and uh, tomorrow and the next day rather, uh, what would be some of the takeaways that you might want to hint at that, uh, that you might be talking about? Uh, I think really it's, it's understand the underlying things that tie all these layout specs together. So things like sizing and alignment are really, really important. Um, mm. I've written quite a lot about that stuff in the last year. Um, and, you know, creating good fallbacks. Their new CSS has been developed to be able to overwrite nicely old CSS. So you can create a float yeah. thing, you can enhance it with Grid. We've got things like feature queries. So we can say, you know, hey, browser, do you support Grid? And if it does support Grid, we can do Grid stuff. And if not, the browser's getting the other stuff. So we've got built into CSS the ability to do elegant fallbacks and to enhance with this stuff. I think that's really important to understand that we don't have to we don't have to be detecting browsers with JavaScript, or we don't have to be trying to create, we don't have to try and polyfill grid, we don't have to try and yeah. give the same experience for other browsers. We need to give a good experience so everyone's able to get the content or use the application or whatever, but it doesn't need to be identical uh, because your customers are not A-B a B testing your websites. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. They never ever look at it in two browsers, so as long as it works well in the one that they're in front of, that's all they care about. Um, so I think it's that sort of stuff, you know, just, just how we can start to be using this stuff in a in a useful way where it's appropriate. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, I saw on your uh, on the bio that that they put up on the, on the website that you're a runner. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, there was actually a bunch of us out this morning. Um, oh, you did it! Yeah, oh, okay. yes, awesome. yeah, oh, yeah. Have to because uh, so Josh Clark is here. He invented Couch to Five K. Which you know all the oh, runners. I didn't know that. Right, yeah. So Josh, oh. invented, he's like the man behind Couch. So he's like oh, a running my. celebrity. So I tell so I've got lots of runner friends who know nothing about what I actually do. They just wonder why I'm constantly <laughs> on an airplane. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, so so I was you know saying, oh, I'm going for a run with a guy who invented Couch 5K, and they're like, whoa, no way. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, like like he's like a proper celebrity in yeah. the running world. So yes, yeah. I, I, oh, um, that's so cool. Yeah. So that's so uh, yeah. So we, we, a bunch of us went out and. Uh, how, how far did you do with three? Uh, yeah, like three miles, 5K, um, yeah. around a, a very, very warm and sweaty. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite hot here. Yes. You always been a runner? Um, I've been running for, oh, it's probably getting on for 10 years now. Um, I'm sort of getting into triathlon at the moment. So Wow. Because I thought, you know, we, running is not enough. We, we need to have extra peril of, of riding bikes and, and jumping in lakes first, you know. Wow, good for <laughs> so, you. That's awesome. So, yeah. So, no, I, I, I do a lot of travel, and, and running is a good way to – see the cities and to get out before conferences you know otherwise i would just sit in hotels all day so yeah well it's nice to loosen up and like you yeah. said you get to see the city you get a little exercise it feels really good and, and you know and quite a lot of the conferences we're managing to scoop up some other people and we all go out in the morning and it's a nice way to chat to people yeah because right? the kind of pressure's off and you know you're not in work mode, but you of course end up talking about CSS while I'm running around the streets. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like but I would yeah. be dying and be yeah. like, no, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> no one speak to me, I'm gross. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, so it, yeah, so it's, it's a nice way to, to meet people and uh, sort of share the interest and exercise and things. So. That's awesome. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Perch. I really enjoy it. It's, what is it now? It's uh, 70 bucks for, for a license. It's yes, yes, something like that, yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we were just talking last night because uh, Drew's here with me, um, who's the other half of Perch, and uh, we were, we're, we're going to be 10 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've been doing this a long time. It's so, so cool. Yeah. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a thing. But yeah, yeah, I think I might have heard of it the first time on maybe Boag World or something yeah, like maybe, that. Yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's, that's we, we, we still do that. And <laughs> But yeah, ten years is a lot. It's a long time in web years, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh gosh, yeah, right. To have the one product. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. so nice though because um, just what you bring with Perch is that you could use it with anything. Yes. You know, you you have your your design and you you want to build it out. Well, you just back this in and there yeah. you go. You you build your own logic out. Yeah, I mean that was that was always the thing with it. You know, we didn't. You know, a lot of other systems, you kind of have to go all in. You've got to build templates for that system rather yeah. than just I've got a website. I'd like to edit that stuff there I yeah i just want to make that into a thing yeah yeah and i think that that was always and that still is you know why why most people use it is that they've just got bits of content they need to edit because not everyone needs everything into a cms you know yeah i just want to make a content type out of one thing and yeah. boom there it is yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I love that. Yeah, exactly. I know so many people who put you know spend a lot of time implementing a CMS on a project, and the client never ever logs in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's That's like a big you know, story. And actually, probably what all the client actually wants to do is be able to change the stories on the homepage or doing that's the sort of thing that Perch is really great at. You know, when you don't need, you know, you're not interested in giving them everything to edit because they're never going to do it. You know, they're not interested. In well, a lot of times they say, oh, I need a I need a WordPress website because in their mind they think a website is a WordPress yes. template yeah. and they don't know what goes into that. So they're, yeah. they're not looking for you to create some kind of com complexity of, of content no, types. No, and you know, there's, there's lots of people just need basic things and that's, yeah, so. Yeah, I love that. Right, do you have any, any final words for our audience? Anything you'd like to say? Um, well, I think I've... I've I'm, I'm terrible. Like once you get started about CSS, I can carry on all day. But you know, <laughs> well, you're very welcome to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and I think I think at the moment we're in a really really neat time for for CSS and for the web in general and the things that are happening. Um, and you know, if you are in a position where you're thinking, oh, you know, it always takes ages for things to happen. It takes ages for things to get into browsers. That really is changing. Um, and so don't write off new things because you think it's going to be five years before you can use it because. Yeah. But, you know, with the speed of releases now with browsers, you know, something new is going to show up. You know, we can be inventing stuff in the CSS working group and seeing it in browsers six months later. It, it really is that fast. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, get excited about new stuff and play with it and let people know. Let, let the CSS working group, let people like myself, you know, are happy to be the voice of, of web developers. Um, let the browser vendors know what you want because that's how we get stuff into, in, into our browsers and useful for us. Yeah, have an actual dialogue with the, yes. with the people uh, yeah. rather than going, ah, they'll figure it out. Yeah, you know, we want to know. We, we really want to hear from people what, what they need. You know, where are the gaps? Where are the things we need to invent? You know, we invent, invent stuff for next. Yeah. Hey, yeah. thank well you said. so much. Yeah, really thank you so much. It. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Good, yeah. good to chat to you. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, our guest, uh, Rachel Andrew, and Ooh. we'll have a lot more coming up uh, all through the day and all through the next three days. So. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.